Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. Even before we started this channel, and some of the reason I wanted to make this channel was to see which tool truck has the most powerful impact wrench. Today we answer that for each of their highest priced, hardest hitting half inch air impact wrenches that you can find on a tool truck. That includes, in order of price, the Mac MPF990501, which lists for $520, the Macco MT2779, which currently shows $540, and the PT850 from Snap-on, which is a cool $630. We had planned on picking up the IRC9000 from Cornwell as well to fully round out this category of tool trucks, but apparently it's simply an Ingersoll Rand 2235Ti Max. Their website even tells you that, which we think is kind of nice. Not to say that IR can't hang, it's actually a beast, but check our episode 27 for the rundown on that gun because today we'll be diving into the even more expensive and in some cases even higher spec air impacts you can only buy on a tool truck, at least for the most part. For 520 to 630 bucks, you'd hope you'd get some game changing specs for that coin, and for the most part, you'd be right. The Snap-on PT850 mirrors its MG725 twin in the specs with 1,190 foot-pounds breakaway, and the Mac, which we've commented before, appears to come in a flashy sort of lipstick cherry gloss red, advertises a huge 1,400, sort of like the M18 High Torque. However, unlike the High Torque, that advertisement of a Max figure is completely missing. The M18 shows 1,000 foot-pounds, and the Max is sort of one and done in the specs and shows 1,400 only. Something that's likely not going to help out much on our rank chart at the end of this episode when we're comparing against those numbers. The Macco MT2779, which to clear up some common confusion is made by PTP, not Ingersoll Rand like models past, comes in with a much more modest 850 in the max torque field when we're talking tightening, but an enormous 1,600 foot-pounds on the bolt breakaway. So we'll have to see if that reverse direction is able to make those head and shoulders gains over the other two today, like those numbers would imply. That Macco would need to though in order to stay ahead in the points, as with that power comes some length as well. At 7 and 5 16 inches long, it's the longest impact on the day. The Snap-on isn't far behind though at 7.2 inches long. This particular very nice condition PT850 was provided to us by Seth, a friend of the channel and brother of Jonda, who also sent us his 1250K and Makita High Torque. Here's hoping they have even more brothers. Unlike the MG725A we tested, this PT850 doesn't come with an optional muffler. It's straight piped through and through, and it sounds it too. Often described as like revving an Italian motorbike, the PT850 lets you know when it's ready for business. <laughs> Besides being a later overall design than the Snap-on MG725 and being a little bit more expensive, this model has what we would consider to be much better forward reverse and power select dial situation, which other than feeling obviously more plasticky, is much easier to use than the MG725, but can feel a bit spongy at times in the forward reverse selection shown here. People often say one of these is more powerful than the other, but today we'll find out. The PT850 is also about half inch shorter than its MG cousin, but if you want short short in this group, you're gonna be going Mac. This Mac was borrowed from the Ugga Dugga Daddy himself's shop, South Main Auto. For some reason, Eric's shop needs several flavors of beans in the arsenal, including this red fashion accessory, which if I'm being honest, I think looks quite smart, although it's not a unanimous feeling over here. If you're not a fan of this particular red though, Stanley Black & Decker, which owns Mac Tools, does make this impact wrench elsewhere under USAG or Facome, so it is possible to have one shipped to you in a different flavor. Either way you look at it, it's 6.4 inches long, the shortest full size we've ever had on the channel, and it's wearing extra garments to boot with that length. Matching most mid torques and few high torque cordless impacts today, the Mac Air Impact gets front facing LEDs to illuminate your work area, activated by a trigger movement that interrupts a magnetic field. When your lights go dim, just pop off this rechargeable sort of front cover by rotating it, and with a micro USB, you can recharge it. Pretty cool. That trigger though, wow is it spongy, like it has three actual zones and doesn't want to live in any of them. Sort of weird. <laughs> the 
This rear scalloped power selection is also kind of funky, we think, too. Not really a natural operation. But let's get into that operation and see those beans. Up first, in our 5 second forward working torque test, is the monster spec Mako, since we have tested it quite a while ago. Median run shown on screen, as usual. And here's the much shorter Mac with its sort of spongy trigger action. So 482 or about 7 to 8% down. Considering Mac doesn't advertise working torque, we don't really know if that's good or bad considering its specs. Last up is the PT850. The MG725 we tested in episode 32 was really not a fan of working forward torque, so let's see how this one fares. That's 403, well down from the other two in our bunch, but that is up from this 373 the MG made. Snap-on air guns just really seem to not like forward torque. Or maybe they're just really biased to reverse, which many Air Tools brands do to begin with. Let's find out. Here's our max torque 10 second reverse test, 90 psi while running in the tools, just like the last test. Let's see the Mac first this time. That's 663, not bad. That would put it in the top four or so half inch impacts ever in this particular test at 6.4 inches long that's some beans for sure up next we'll see the maco mt2779 which we bought when it was listed for 520 dollars but is 540 now is it worth a jackson more than the mac let's see Well, yeah, I'd take 9 to 10% for 20 bucks, 724. The Mako gun is one of the few air impacts that can hang with a Milwaukee high torque in this test. Up next is the Snap-on PT850, the only tool today that was made in the US instead of Taiwan. Six hundred and fifty three this time, sneaking right under the Mac, starting to even things out on this front. The Mac actually sees the most dynamic torque out of the bunch down low, with impressively powerful blows for its size, but the Mako comes out on top over both. The last test is for all the beans. If you watch this channel and are familiar with what Mac code guns do with higher line pressure of one hundred and fifty PSI that we use in this test, you'll know that this should make for a pretty good matchup. For this longer reverse test, let's jump into the head to head versus Mac in Mako first. Seven hundred and eighty-three. Seven hundred and eighty-three is more than we got from the M eighteen high torque, and this thing is six point four inches long. It really enjoys higher pressure, and the Mako, as usual, doesn't pick up as much in this particular test. Let's see if the snap on is able to take advantage of that detail as well. Seven hundred and eighty four this time. Both the Mac and the Snap on shoot up at least one hundred foot pounds in this test, enjoying the higher pressure a lot. While there's been some chatter about the reliability of the PT eight fifty versus the MG seven twenty five at the end of the day, it felt and sounded really strong at one hundred fifty PSI here. The Mac, on the other hand, check out the vibration we get from it. It's made more pronounced on this BCS run, but even on our max run, you may have seen just how much head wiggling this thing does. It's the first air tool we've used that we feel might actually qualify for a wrist breaking score, which is usually only a cordless tool thing. 
keeping the Mac aligned in order for the tool to have a good run led to the most inconsistency we've seen from an error impact on an otherwise healthy tool. You might get 710 sometimes, you might get near 800 with this gun. You'd likely only see this on super stuck stuff or maybe like a ball joint press, but it was sort of weird to us seeing this so pronounced for the first time. With their scores in the books, let's see how these three tools stack up on the rank list. The Macos currently sits in sixth overall, not getting helped by its price much, but much like these other tools we're showing today. The Mac and Snap-on sitting right below it for now as we tally their points. Their power runs get recorded as so, 48, 66, and 78 for Mac, and 40, 61, and 78 for Snap-on. That working torque run hurting it a bit, but definitely bringing it on that BCS run. At 6.4 inches long, with the power it made today, the Mac is pretty impressive. It gets 122.3 foot-pounds per inch, the second highest we've ever seen, and it didn't need the huge bulk sort of body of an 1894 Thor to do that. The 7.2 inches of the PT850 bring it to a 108.9, also super good, edging out the Mako in the longer IRTI Max above it, which Cornwell also carries. We polled you guys for about a day a few weeks ago on what we should use for the Mac gun's torque claim. It doesn't list working torque, which is what you normally compare against in this column, but the USAG and Facome versions do list a very low 460 newton meters or 330 foot pounds. The top two results in our poll from you guys were leaving the 1400 in this column that the Mac shows, really dinging this tool big time or use the 1,000 foot-pounds, which is the highest rated working torque claim we've seen from any tool on this channel so far. So that's what we're doing here. It gets 78% of that 1,000 figure, and the snap-on is basically playing a very fully honest game here, claiming 810, and it gets 97% of that. And we fully feel it can probably loosen the 1,180 it claims as well. The Mac costs the same as what we paid for the Macco many months back at 520 bucks, and gets 22.6. The Snap-on is the most expensive tool on this list, bar none, and gets a 19. That totals 414.9 for the Mac and 403.9 for the Snap-on. Putting the Mac ahead of the IR, also offered by Cornwell, but sold for a bit more on that truck, and surpassing it by a decimal point for fifth place, which bumps down the Macco as well into seventh, and Snap-on nestles right in there too, in 8th above the Aircat 1250K, which sells for only 209 bucks, not bad. It's funny and maybe a bit fitting that all the tool truck era impacts are in a row here, Mac, Cornwell, Macco, then Snap-on, despite this long list of tools they're ranking on. Mac becomes the third highest ranked air tool on here and really the second of the ones we'd recommend buying. And with its innovative front LED rechargeable headlights, its price compared to the others doesn't look too unbelievable, but is it the most powerful of this bunch? Technically, across all the runs, the Mako is the most powerful of these tool truck brands when you consider its forward torque and when running, quote, normal pressure. But if you're always cranking up that pressure or need to fit your impact into confined areas often, the Mac within these tools takes the crown. And that's if you're okay with a heavy dose of wiggle from it now and then. We'll certainly be doing cordless from these tool trucks in the future when we can get our hands on all of them. Until then, lots more head-to-heads like this one coming your way. Subscribe to stay tuned, click like to please the YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.